Here we're going to demonstrate how to build the coil train. To build the coil train, you first need a battery. You can either use a pen light battery. I'm using a AAA battery. Uh, the reason why is the smaller you make the diameter of your train, the longer your train, your coil tracks will be for the same amount of cable. Then what you also need are two neodymium magnets that are slightly bigger in diameter than your battery. Okay, now what you do, when you put your train together, you need to take, when your magnets are attracted like this, you need to take them apart very carefully. Okay, and then flip them end. So in other words, the batteries are not in attraction. The way you can double check this and think in case you made a mistake, if I take this one off the end, and bring it to this end, it should be in repulsion, and it is. So I'm gonna take it off and put it back on this end. Now, because this end is on the button, it kind of is a little difficult about staying centered. Don't worry about that for now. I tried using washers, uh, but let me try a brass washer instead of a steel washer. The steel washer causes it to be kooky. Yeah, the brass washer works a lot better. And that will keep the battery pretty much flat against the nub. And because it's brass, it'll make sure the electric current connects. So what's going to happen here is current is going to go and connect into this battery. And this battery is going to make electrical contact with the coil tracks. And then the current's going to rush back and be picked up by the bet this magnet making contact on the different part of the coil track. Now how do you make the coil track? Let's put the, the train aside. And what you need is you need a mandrel, basically a wooden stick that's, that's slightly larger than your magnets, and then you're going to coil copper wire around it. Now don't use the magnet wire, because the magnet wire has insulation on it. You want bare copper wire. And once you coil it around, what, the first thing you need to do is go through and make sure that you know the tracks aren't making contact with each other, that there's a little bit of gap between the tracks. because you don't want the tracks shorting against each other and it also gives you a little bit more length for your train and you can actually see the train in your coil track okay so I'm going to take the track off the mandrel now and this little track was made with 18 gauge wire oh it looks like 7.6 meters it looks like so this made this much coil track, which works out to be, it looks like, like about 20 centimeters. Okay, then you take your train and you put it into one end or the other of your coil track and it's going to go. If you put it in the other way, it's going to come, it's not going to want, it's going to come on, it's going to come back out at you. Okay, so it's only going to run one way. And that's how you make a little coil train. Now, let me show you if, you, if you make a mistake and you don't get these magnets in opposite directions, now these two magnets are in the same direction. If you put that in, nothing's going to happen. Okay, so it's very important to make this work that the magnets have to be opposites, pointing at each other, as it were. Oops. And voila, there is your coil train made with a simple battery and two neodymium magnets. Okay, so how does the coil train work? Well, what I've got here is I've got some bigger magnets to help me demonstrate this with you, for you, because uh, the bigger magnets are much easier to see on the MagnaView film. As you can see, the MagnaView film shows a ring around the magnets. Now, other people don't know what this is. I'm telling you right now, that's called what I call the edge current. Okay, a disc magnet is, uh, without a hole is basically a current ring. And these magnets down here have about somewhere between 1500 to 3000 amps of current traveling around the outside of the magnet. Now it's not real current, it's virtual current, but it works just the same. And 
I can explain what virtual current is. It, it, it's not that difficult to explain, but it, it's if you actually had a coil with 15,000 amps or 1,500 amps, it would give you the exact same magnetic field pattern as this disc. Now, that's at the bench top scale, okay? If you go down and you're, you've got your little spaceship and you're working down in, the, in between the atoms of this, that model doesn't really hold up. That current ring model is great for the bench top scale, things that electrical engineers or tinkerers use. That model works perfectly good. So the disc magnet like this is just a, basically a ring of current. And this magnet here, because it's got an inside hole, is two counter-rotating rings of current. One direction around the outside and the opposite direction around the inside. And th these models work good. These magnets here are about 2,700 amps right here uh, that I've measured them before. Well, these are probably weak because they're old. So, what happens? Oops, not that. When the train is in the tracks, okay, these neodymium magnets, the outer coating is conductive metal. And so the current from the battery goes into one of the neodymium magnets, makes contact with the track. And then therefore the current in this track, it goes through the coil and is picked up by the other neodymium magnet on the other end. Okay, hold that in your mind for a second. Now, when the edge currents, when edge currents in a magnet are in attraction, or in the same direction, the magnets attract. When the edge currents are going in opposite directions, the magnet repels. Okay, so the way the magnet train works is the current, here's the positive side of the battery, goes into the track. And so in this section of track here, you basically have a a basically an electromagnet okay and if the current in the electromagnet is in the same direction as the magnet on this side you're going to get attraction and this magnets want to go want to go into the electromagnet if the current ring on this magnet is the opposite to the current in the track there's going to be repulsion and you're going to get a net movement that's why it's very important that these currents go in opposite directions and again, the way you ensure that they're in opposite directions is if I take this off and hold this over here, there should be repulsion. If there's repulsion, then we know that the current in the edges of these magnets are going in opposite directions. And that's the way the train works. And the reason why it doesn't work the other way, because if this magnet were the other way and was going in the same direction as the current, you'd get attraction as well. And so therefore, if the current in the track and in each of the magnets are all in the same direction this train won't move. It'll, basically the two forces developed by the magnets will cancel and that is how the magnet train works. Oh, the battery's getting weak already. There it goes. And there you go. That's how the magnet train works. Or the coil train rather. I'm going to call that a coil train. Pretty neat little thing. I didn't invent it, somebody else did. Uh, but uh, New Electromagnetism or, or New Magnetism version 2 easily explain how this works. And I'll give you the link to the uh, legacy videos. You know, I mean, Ken Wheeler calls, you know, this the, the inertial plane and all that stuff. And you know what, you can call it whatever you want. Call it whatever you want. But if you don't explain how it works, your theory is pointless. Using this as a simple current ring model works beautifully. And it matches with the, with the measurements you could make with a Gauss meter. You know, if you put a Gauss meter at a particular point relative to this and you compute a current ring with however many amps that is, you get the exact right reading. Okay, so, um, and you can also put it into my software and you'll be able to compute the force. That is so cool. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, that is how the coil train works.